So I am coming straight off of work and into a freaking KOF 15 character trailer. What a day. And my fan is going ham in the back, but it's been some weird days here. Very cold mornings, but then later on it gets really hot. Anyways, so SNK dropped this trailer while I was sleeping. And it is, of course, Hinako Shijo. If you want to know my thoughts about her, as far as like the choice of character to close out this season, you can watch my previous video right here. I'm just going to get right into this because I do have a little bit to say after this concerning just KOF 15, I guess, as a whole right now. But let's just get to the trailer. Freaking song, man. Being all charming, but you don't realize. You see that hand right there? You see this right here? See y'all looking at <laughs> those of you who don't know about this character are just looking at it thinking, oh, Link, she looks like so cute and everything. But she's warning you right here of what you about to get. <laughs> this right here, you about to get this times five hundred or something. <laughs> oh God, let's go. Oh, yeah, on TV. Who are you talking to? Antonov? <sighs> that man Antonov, man. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what's he... What reservations does he have about Sumo? What you got? Here we go. <laughs> I told you. I forgot the joke I was going to make. I was probably going to reiterate, like I said, those of you that don't know about this character, obviously I'm not talking about KOF hardcore fans, obviously, but it's just like, told you, man, hands and hands and hands. Like... <laughs> Oh my god, people talking about getting the hand. She literally gives you the hands. Just saying. I just find her so unique. Like, even I couldn't believe it. I already told y'all the story about my friend Larry, who didn't believe me when I told them that this character does sumo. I mean, honestly, when I first saw her, I didn't believe it was... <laughs> I didn't believe she did sumo. But, I mean... It's just so awesome the way they have this pint-sized powerhouse just freaking drilling people. And on top of that, they have her doing it on a big target like Antonov. Like, it's just... <laughs> I find it kind of silly, but, like, it's cool, honestly, in a ways. Ah, Shingo. I love how she's being so cutesy and then yet she's literally like bringing joy to everybody that she's talked to so far talking to Antonov he gets all giddy you got freaking Shingo right here he's all pumped up like <laughs> it's just sugar and freaking just dripping off this character well, never mind. You could not stop him from simping for Kyo. You couldn't, Miss Shijo. You tried. And now she's about to drill another big guy. He just, this is really going to be a trailer of freaking Hinako just beating up big dudes. <laughs> God. Oh, man. SAK knows what they're doing. Oh, no. The claws. Oh, beat up my boy! No! No! What the hell? You gotta get it! He's a big, he's a big guy. Ring is called. You know what? Maybe I'm thinking on this a little too hard. The ring is calling you. Answer by following me to begin your sumo career. Remember how I told you all, in case you don't know this bit of trivia, that. Her debut wasn't even in a KOF fighting game. It was in Battle to Paradise. Because basically, she was on like one of the menus in Battle to Paradise. This phrase right here, this sounds like something that you would hear like on a menu, like the freaking character announcer. Like imagine like freaking Hinako being like one of those unlockable character announcers and she would literally say this. <laughs> That's what I thought about when I saw this. 
イフィル様っては魅力的だからな I mean, I just attract attention wherever I go, don't I? I mean, come on, on hell. We know you're not stupid. <laughs> It's so crazy that move left her like. I'm like full screen almost. Mm, trying to catch it. Yeah, like quite a ways away, so. I mean, it's just kind of like. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like one of the problems with Lily in Street Fighter 6. And that's the fact that her command grabs literally leave her at like somewhat of a disadvantage. Like, of course, you can be far enough to where she can get her little win stacks, but at the same time, seeing that she's a mid to close range character, pretty much landing that, she kind of doesn't get anything. But I think Hinako is going to fare much better. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And not to mention, it's more big dudes, man. It's more big dudes. Freaking Ralph, I gotta see it again. Ugh. What do you mean? Hinako's gonna hug you. Hinako's gonna hug you. And if you get that reference, you're awesome. The girl freaking ended it with a twister. One more time. Gonna hug you, m a k o t o Let me shut up. <laughs> oh, that was a KO. Got OTGs, y'all.、Yeah. Push! KO at 15! What did I say? Get these hands. Sorry, Honda. You're not this cool. And Hinako's not even really a favorite character of mine. Like, I'll take a Hinako any day over a freaking E Honda or a freaking Ganryu. Sue me. Get mad. I don't care. This right here was a shocker, right here. I did catch on to some information. I haven't seen the trailer. I was gonna wait until I came back home, but I did get wind of some information. This, the release date here, that was a little bit surprising to me because maybe my seasons are a little bit off, but last time they were saying winter of this year. It is ain't the winter. This ain't winter. Pretty early. And it is complete. And just in case you didn't know, cross platform play is now live. I mean, with all my jabbering throughout that, you could tell I was at least impressed. Like I said, she's not my favorite, but I can't say I wasn't impressed because I absolutely was. With that being said, I know the big hot topic is where's season three? Where's season three? And I lightly touched on that in the previous video, the one that I mentioned where I give my thoughts about Hinako Shijo as the closing pick for this season. But I want to venture a little further into something. I don't know if season three is going to be a thing or not. I mean, I kind of hope it is, but it's just kind of like I'm at a point where more characters, I mean, eh, cool, I guess. I don't know. It's just like. KOF 15 as a game overall, I like it, but at the same time, I still feel like they oversold this game. There was nothing really expectation shattering outside of just Cronin slash K49's return. And it was really it. Like, even with that being leaked, <laughs> a lot of people were still kind of debating. Like, I remember some people thinking that that freaking stand in picture of 
Tetsuo Shima could have also signaled the return of Nameless. But alas, you know what we got. I don't know, it's like, I'm not gonna be upset if more characters come in season three or more bosses or something like that. It's just, I'm just glad that SNK isn't listening to certain fans when it comes to a game like, for instance, Fatal Fury City of the Wolves. And I'm talking about those fans that have been saying stuff like, oh, y'all keep complaining about single player content and SNK would have been wasting money if they put in single player content like Street Fighter 6 or Mortal Kombat. I got a comment like that on my KOF 15 review and that is aged so well because I mean, at this point when it comes to single player content, what is there to really do? And I mean, yeah, I'm somebody and I've emphasized it and said it plenty of times before, I get my enjoyment out of playing against other people. I'm one of those people that likes playing online and playing in the tournaments whenever I get a chance. At the same time though, if you want this game to reach more people, you gotta do more than just pander to just the loyal fan base. You have to venture out. And I mean, not all casuals enjoy just playing a bunch of matches all the time. Say what you want about Mortal Kombat 1 single player content or Street Fighter 6s, and I'm not even saying they're perfect by any chance. They do have some flaws, but at the same time, they're different and they drew in the casual audience. This is why I'm glad SNK is actually going to really and possibly actually shatter some expectations when it comes to City of the Wolves. Honestly, I'm just more ready for that game to really just start going at this point. But like I said, I'm not gonna be upset if we get a season three for KOF 15, I'm not gonna sneeze at it. But it's like, at this point, more characters, that's really just gonna be pandering to us, the hardcore KOF fans at this point. I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, I'm not doing backflips over it right now. Like the only thing that could really surprise me at this point when it comes to shattering expectations with this game is if we literally get something like a maximum impact character in this game. Or maybe somebody like Akisara Westfield makes it into the game. Or somebody like Silver or Shohayate. Any character from a franchise that has little to no representation in this game. Whether KOF, far as like the mainline series, gets its first guest character team. And I emphasized mainline for a reason. But yeah, this was a very interesting season. I mean, between the two seasons that we got of DLC, I kinda liked season one a little bit more. And that's just on a personal note. Like there wasn't really much that was hype for me in terms of season two, honestly. Like the only thing that really just kinda got me going was Naja's return. And I mean, SNK did really well by her. I was very happy with how they handled her. Other than that, I mean, it just is what it is. But yeah, Hinako, very impressive. I'm very happy for the people that wanted her there. I went over that little Power Geyser poll in the previous video and Hinako placed pretty high up. She was pretty high, she was in the top 20. So I mean, very welcome addition to this game. And I mean, again, on top of that, we haven't seen her in a minute. She wasn't in 14, so there are no reused assets. But again, I could be speaking a little too soon because I'm speaking on this as if this might be the end of the line for KOF 15 because I'm 50-50 on whether or not there will be a season three. I'm 50-50 on it. Like I said, on one hand, you know, it depends on whenever City of the Wolves is going to get going. That's really it right there. But for me, SNK just kind of oversold KOF 15. It's a good game. It's not an expectation shattering game. And I don't want to hear all this other freaking mess because not one person has been able to give me a reason that's viable when it comes to that slogan. Nobody. I don't want to hear this crap about, oh, like, shattering expectations means that they didn't simplify their gameplay like all the other games. And it's like, that's bull. You can do more with the auto combos in this game than you could in 14. And it's like, I know somebody cried and bitched at me one time when I mentioned it was something, I think it was a post on Onyx's freaking channel or something, but it was something about the simplification of the game. And then they were like, oh, how are you saying it's simplified? Like for example, you can do Ash Crimson's KOF 13 combos in KOF 15. Yeah, I know, duh, but between the two games, which one has auto combos in it? And I keep mentioning the auto combos because at least with KOF 13, when it came to those Ash Crimson combos, 
you pretty much had more of an incentive to learn them. There was more pressure on you to learn them. There were no auto combos to help you as opposed to KOF 15. And I'm not even saying like they're bad. It's just, again, I don't think the gameplay was really expectation shattering. I like the gameplay of 15 more than 14 personally. I've made it pretty clear before that I was not a fan of locking EX moves behind max mode. Was not a fan. <laughs> not in 14, <laughs> I didn't like that. But like I said, really KOF 15 just kind of really corrected a lot of things that was wrong with 14. Everything looked a bit more smooth and sleek in 15. That got thrown away. The net code, which sucked in 14. 15 has a pretty good net code. Matchmaking was an issue from the beginning with 15, but at least from what I'm seeing, matchmaking seeming more solid. I kind of wish that they could have done it quicker, but I mean, hey, it just is what it is. I'd much rather you arrive to the destination as opposed to just never making it at all. But like I said, I'm just speaking on this as someone who is kind of 50-50 on whether there will be a season three. And if there is one, cool. I'm not going to really sneeze at it, but I mean, my hype for it is kind of meh at this point because at this point, like I said, unless it's like a maximum impact character, a freaking Savage Rain character, like any freaking series that hasn't been represented, Metal Slug, or, you know, somebody like Shin Wu or Heavy D, I'm not really gonna be hype. I'll be impressed, but hype, shrug. But that's all I got to really say about that. What do you think about Hinako Shijo? How are you feeling about KOF 15 overall? And once again, and for the record, if you answered this in my previous video, you don't have to answer it again. Unless you insist, or whether you're new here, or whether you didn't see that video, do you think season three will be a thing? Until next time, I'm Chris Lotus, signing off. You all take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. Be cool to each other. See ya.